Come, Come on in. in. Oh my goodness. Hi, sir. Wait. Super quiet in here. Come this on in. This is crazy. What's crazy? I haven't seen you in Hi. so long. Hi. How are you? Why, Why are you wearing the most like hard to be pregnant in outfit? I know that's so anti-pregnancy. Dude, I broke in two of my major life rules today. I'm wearing a denim jumpsuit and I went to a galleria. <laughs> are you showing? Are you due soon? What's going on? I need to know everything. Are you, are you crowning? What's Hold going on? on? <laughs> Why are you spreading your legs? Like I, you're I don't about know to what's happening. So yeah, so I'm four. <laughs> I know it's so funny. I'm four months, six. I don't know why. As soon as you're pregnant, everything's in weeks. I'm so dyslexic and bad. Yeah, it. So I'm not sure exactly, but I'm like four and a half months. It's got a penis. That's all I know. <laughs> yeah, I just say the funniest thing you did was when you when we were at your party and you were like, you showed me that you were like, I'm pregnant. And I was like, oh my god. And you were eating more than I've ever seen you eat. I was like, oh my god. And then um, you like. You had this same thing, like huh. a thing that's around your neck, like mine. And you showed me the sonogram and you're like, don't tell anyone. And then you forgot to close it and you were walking around <laughs> with the sonogram open over your uterus around. I was like, Whitney, turn it off throughout the party. <laughs> that's now, right. I was like, I don't want anyone to know about this. <laughs> no. Oh, hello, slugs. It's me. Vegas on my birthday doing my favorite thing playing slots I want you to make like a buffalo and herd your way over the Regent Theater on August 4th where we are doing a Trash Tuesday live show a lot could go down a lot could go wrong actually that's what I meant to say so you can get tickets to the link below this video do not miss this please go get your tickets now I can't wait to meet you to interact with you to squeeze you um, so Find the ticket link, get your tickets now, and I'll see you there. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash trash Tuesday today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash trash Tuesday. Go to drinksimplyspike.com slash trash Tuesday to find out how to get your hands on new Simply Spiked Peach. That's drinksimplyspike.com slash trash Tuesday. Flavored beer, naturally flavored with other natural flavors. Simply Spike Co., Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Celebrate responsibly. Simply Spiked is a trademark of the Simply Orange Juice Company. Stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash trash Tuesday. That's rocketmoney.com slash trash Tuesday. Rocketmoney.com slash trash Tuesday. Hi, you guys. I am officially on tour, and you can get tickets to see my stand-up in Oxnard, D.C., Boston, Madison, Wisconsin, San Diego, Detroit, Chicago, San Jose, Irvine, and more. And you can get tickets at estheronice.com. And make sure you check out my new podcast with Rick Glass. It's called Rick and Esther Have a Time, and that is exactly what we do. Hey, Sluggies. I am so excited. You can come see me this weekend in South Carolina in Greenville at the Comedy Zone. That's July 28th and 29th. I'll be in Philadelphia August 11th and 12th. I'll be in Calgary for the Great Outdoors Comedy Festival August 27th, and I'll be in San Francisco in September and Austin in October. You can see all of my tickets and all of my sales at annieletterman.com slash shows. Check me out every Thursday on Annie Wood. Love you guys, can't wait to see you. Now, before we move forward, are you keeping it? <laughs> you know what? I don't know. I've been in Texas a lot. So I've, I've been going to Rogan's Club in months. So I sort of missed my window. I spent the first three trimesters at, for three weeks in Austin. But yeah, I think we're keeping it. It's all happening. Have Are we going to had... make an Instagram for it? No. Like Marshall? Like no, Marshall like Rogan. <laughs> Wait, have you had, like, how are you? Like, are you sick? Are you, is there any... Are you fine? Are I you feel great. I I'm, I have a hot take. Pregnancy is not that hard. What? Uh, <laughs> it's not that hard. It's you know I don't I think that being a touring comedian it's that's the worst. Hard. That's <laughs> yeah exactly. I think maybe just the bar is pretty low for us in terms of like physical comfort. But I was on the road. I didn't find out for ten weeks. I am the dumb whore that had no idea. What is that? So face? you didn't even that's feel a nausea of like the first couple. I of was nothing. touring in Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. I was like nauseous. I was tired, but I just like didn't for know. ten whole weeks, guys. I, was, <laughs> a wild tour. I just there. kind of was like, I'm always kind of nauseous and tired these days. I was like eating out of vending machines. I'm glad I didn't notice though, because I guess like week three to 10 are the most high risk for miscarriage. So like stressing out, I probably would have yeah. been like, you know, stressed or, you know, something. So I just like totally didn't even notice. No, I you were just producing fun. like 40 roasts. 
Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they are still re-editing. She's like, the coolest thing about OnlyFans is you can still edit now. And I'm like, Whitney, end the show. She sends me like new edits all the time. I'm like, Whitney, this is insanity. I really, that was a really big part of my deal with OnlyFans TV is that if I deliver on a deadline and I see something later that makes my Virgo brain go crazy, I can re-upload it. <laughs> so there was like an open, like I want to do this custom open that was in front of a green screen and all this like cool animated stuff and we couldn't finish it in time to make, because it was very important to me that it aired on Mother's Day. Day, yeah. just to make sure that my dead mother was just like a was suicidal in the grave for what I was airing. And um, so we did it and then uh, uploaded it on time and then later added it, uploaded something. <laughs> and then I would like see stuff in the edit that I was just like, ah, like that just doesn't sound good. Let's change it. There was a couple, um, because I was pregnant at the time I was editing it. And you do get a little mom brain. I mean, you, yeah. I, you have a vampire eating your brain. And there were every reaction shot of Dan Levy was completely out of focus <laughs> <laughs> on that first edit that you would have seen. Like, he's just out of focus for no reason. <laughs> and um, so we uh, re-uploaded basically to clean it all up later. Yeah. Did you um, have a preference for the sex of the baby? I'm going to say something that is just is what it is. I am shocked by how sexist I was when I found out it was a boy because I was like, OK, it's going to be what it is. And for some reason, like you kind of go like, I guess it's a girl. I don't know why. Because yeah. it's just like, you know, and then the text just said boy. And I was like, Fuck it. like I I pumped my really? arm. I was 100% sure that, that your body can only make a boy. Yeah, That's so fun. A lot of people say they're like, you're a boy mom. That's, how, you know, I think it was more this. Number one. I'm afraid with a girl, I would project my shit onto them. Like I was just You're like, afraid of that? That's the only reason I want a kid. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I only want a girl for that reason. I see my girlfriends that have daughters. They're in a dog fight. <laughs> they're in a nightmare. The idea of me destroying my body for you and you're going to talk to me like that, I will <laughs> pinch you at Trader Joe's. Like I will, I'm going to be a pinchy mom. Dude. <laughs> yeah, pinching works. I'm I was, a, I, was a pinchy pinchy ba- I was a pinched baby. Pinched my whole life. It works. Pinched in the whole Look works. how successful you are. Look yeah. at her cheekbones. She we need tired. to bring back a little child abuse. Dude, my mom used to purple nurple like just just twist it in public at a JC Penny. Yeah. And I'd walk around with blue titties. We call them like pennies, weeks. but okay. Oh, fancy, <laughs> JC. Because what you would do if you didn't want to go somewhere with your mom in public, you would just sit on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? She would pinch me behind the ear all the way to the car. That shit works. Is that still legal? I'm doing it. I wasn't pinched. Armpits, because but... you don't really bruise there that much. Oh, smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just find them in the places that aren't so like obvious. And also, I think that I'm just too sensitive to babies dressing sexy now <laughs> it drives me nuts like people are like boys shouldn't dress like girls girls shouldn't dress like boys little girls shouldn't dress like little girls like we need to stop the mini skirts target has a gay section who gives a shit have you seen the i tried to buy a bathing suit for my ki- friend's kid they bikinis for They're only bikinis so or toddlers. yeah so sexy though. but sexy and then the the what is it the christening outfits i don't think i'm doing that they're just wedding dresses they're <laughs> they are. McClint- they are. corsets <laughs> With like veils. The like, fact that you're even considering <laughs> that you're like, I don't think I'm going to christen my baby. The fact that you've thought about christening your baby. Well, you know what I'm saying. I'm just saying I'm not going to probably be in the market for christening dresses, but I just, you know that I'm haunted you by- You got to have a breath. Why are you saying Jessica McClintock mm. sent like a certain feeling uh-huh. down my body? Yeah. What a throwback. That was a, that was a real moment. But I, 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 I just pictured all these mm. gifts for a girl coming in and my friends giving me like mini skirts for, I mean, I could have just borrowed your clothes <laughs> by a girl. Um, but- um, uh, and just being like, oh, what? So my baby's supposed to wear many. Like, I just, I, you know, that I have like some weird connection with Shirley Temple, where I feel the need to like make things right with what was done to her. <laughs> the fact that our our business weirdest was built... sentence ever. I have a connection with Shirley Temple. Yeah, I do. But I'm just shocked it wasn't you saying. <laughs> of all the Shirley Temple involved. Coming for me. No, but do you remember like during like Me Too? Everyone's like, is Hollywood creepy? I'm like, you mean the business that was built on the back of a four year old toddler <laughs> named Shirley Temple who was twerking on men on steamboats? <laughs> no parents and there was no moms there's no nan she they were she was like at war with soldiers <laughs> like dancing and it was just like wild did have you seen Shirley Temple in blackface dude <laughs> they did her very dirty in blackface Wait, I have a f- I, okay so I've always wanted a girl I'm so fixated on having a Same. girl only yeah. I really want to know like if I can even express the grief I want to express if it turns out I can have a boy because let me ask you a question if, I, if it had said girl, would I have had the same reaction? I don't know. I'm so much takes over biologically. And I think that like, I always just assumed I would have a girl. I feel like my in my life, being in any kind of therapy, trauma therapy, every work, piece of work I've done on myself is to break these ancestral cycles 
for when I have a girl. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it was like, I always just pictured having a girl, but then it was boy and I was like, oh. But I think there was a little bit of like, me, I, if I have two, I want her to have an older brother. Like the best yeah. thing for the girl is to have an older brother. So I think I also thought of the boy in terms of an older brother right away because yeah. I had an older brother and I think that really helped me in a lot of ways. And I guess it's just like, I've always thought that way too. And for some reason, I'm just like, is bringing a girl into this world right now? Like, is that something I'm rooting for? If it happens, great. Mm -hmm. But there was just, I think it was just relief, not excitement. I was just like, okay. This is going to be yeah. a little easier than maybe. I Maybe. Yeah. At least, like, not on my house. Right, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? But maybe emotionally. I'm not, like, I have a friend who, Miss You, who does my hair extension, said that she, like, literally got in a confrontation with somebody. She's got a daughter who's, like, 15. And she, like, walked into Jamba Juice and, like, guys were looking at her. And she was like, excuse me, do you have a, f like, she went, yeah. I think yeah. I would just go nuts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I, 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 or not, I think once you actually get pregnant, you're like, oh, I'm so much chiller about this than I thought I would. And your brain kind of just starts taking over, you know? Like I always had weird shit with my body and eating stuff. And like, I literally haven't thought about calories. I haven't thought about my body. You I look really You good look too. fucking that's hot. So nice. By the way, nothing fits. And I'm like, that's so cool. He's but, growing instead of like, things don't fit. By I, the I, way though, when I saw you at the party, you looked really, really good. Oh. And so when you said you were pregnant, I was like, oh my God. But also I found like- found out like 20 minutes before this that. is gonna sound really weird, but like I feel like a sexual connection to you. I you're gay now, right? Speak no, I'm that, not. that's the new thing. Who's, I'm not gay. Uh, both yeah, of you. I'm like one of the straightest girls. Oh yeah, apparently. I was dating a girl when I found out I was pregnant. Really? That's, I, that's a tricky way, conversation. I, know, I was at a strip I'm, club with Whitney, and then all of a sudden I looked over. I was like, "Is Whitney just like straddling a woman, making out with her?" We were all like trying to act normal. <laughs> No, you By the way, that was, I told went, Dave that you had a that you were dating a woman, and he keeps asking me. He's like, "Has Whitney told her girlfriend she's pregnant yet?" <laughs> <laughs> By the I way, don't know. Her, By the way, I was hanging out with Whitney all day at the the party for the Burt roast, and we we're up in your hotel room, and there was just this hot girl. That, and you always kind of have someone that's very comfortable, like that I haven't met yet. So I'm like, did she hire a new assistant? Like I don't know. You always have someone that's like carrying your purse or going through your thing. <laughs> I do not. You do, but it's like, they usually work for you. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Do you like, know what I mean? So I, I have just a assumed name. you had a new. <laughs> <laughs> going through her things, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> She's doing it for like Elle magazine online. You know what's but, weird? The more I, I don't have any of that anymore, I decide not to do an assistant, not to do, yeah. I'm just like, how do you know. break it to your um, girl lover that you're pregnant? Well, Dave luckily, really wants to know. a malignant narcissist told her without me being able to get to it first. So it was a nightmare. But, um, you know, it just, yeah, it happened. It happened. It happens. But um, it's tricky. I mean, I think I was listening that you were maybe talking to girls or hanging out with girls or something and you weren't sure if you were gay or not. You know if you're gay if you can get through an eight-minute voice memo. <laughs> from a girl. <laughs> I would get to like four and a half minutes and I'd be like, I guess I'm not gay. <laughs> I'm not gay. It's just like I, as someone that leaves voice memo, eight minute, you're done. And it, it was back in the time where if you listen to half of it, and had to do something. You know, oh, start over. God, yeah, oh, so that annoying. is the worst. I, I guess I like over. dick. I guess. Oh my I like God, dick. no, I'm still in the trial and error um, yeah. phase. You know, like I've been on two dates with girls. I made out with two girls, and um, there isn't a whole lot of blood flow happening when I'm making out but like I I'm still trying to push past the feeling of not feeling super horny when we're making out interesting I also think it's probably the person too because it's like I think for me when I'm attracted to a girl it's like that girl or that guy like there's something about them mm. maybe, maybe they're recreating some childhood thing or adrenaline thing or something but I can't like force myself I'm just I'm not like which, by the way, is better. Can you imagine just being attracted to all guys or all girls? Yeah. Like, it's very yeah. specific. Wait, yeah. what kind of a woman are you attracted to? It, I've been like trying her. to figure she this out. Like That's her. not. <laughs> she did. It was like, Whitney's <laughs> making out with herself. What the hell is going on? I really was Wait, like, was it your like, Whitney doll? It looks like Whitney. That's like, uh, basically. Was it your Whitney doll? She does. <laughs> she, no, I can't afford her. Um, I I don't think she looks like me, but a lot of people did say that. She had the vibe. Wait, okay, so I I... Sorry, Esther, this is going to hurt your feelings, but I'm not attracted to short girls. Mm, so they have I, to be my not. height or taller. <laughs> just takes it like That's a guy arm. thing. Guys like that. Guys are want to be able to. Spinner, they want to spinner. I think that for me, you know, I think as, as I, whatever, as come to terms with that, like we're emotional people. We're sensitive. We're emotional. And there's something so hot about not watching someone's face glaze over. 
<laughs> when you're talking about like, yeah, I had my feelings hurt by this. And I don't know why. What did they mean by this comment? And the person you're with is like, huh, what did they mean? Yeah. Like, and yeah. there's something like yeah. really hot about not having someone like roll their eyes at you <laughs> while you're talking about something hard that happened, you yeah. know? So that is really hot about yeah. being with a girl, you know? Someone who's like, yeah, let's pick this Instagram comment apart for two and a half hours. Yeah, they're locked in. Yeah, and they're not thinking you're crazy or stupid. You're not feeling like, you know... Um, you're being a psycho or obsessive. They don't pathologize you, you know. And then it gets tricky, though, because a week later, then they're doing that to your text. And you're like, God damn it. Yeah. You know? So <laughs> dating a woman is also very educational because you realize how you come off to guys. Yeah. <laughs> you realize. You're like, oh, OK, I get it now. Um, but it's kind of nice to not feel crazy. You know, it's kind of yeah. nice to not feel like, you know. To feel validated. By the yeah. Person. Or just to, like, feel like you said something and they heard it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. Or to have someone be like, oh, I remember you're allergic to dairy. <laughs> <laughs> After six months, I'm not going to keep, you know what I mean? Yeah. Just like little things kind of like that. Now, are we allowed to ask or is there any kind of reveals about the baby's father? Mm -hmm. Is that like a conversation? He's just he's literally a guy. From, <laughs> he's a hillbilly from North Carolina. Ever, I thought I when was barren, dude. I, when I met him, he was in a Spider-Man costume. Yeah. There was a guy in a Spider-Man okay. costume following around with like a many files. I don't know what the files <laughs> were. And they were like spilling out of his hand. And I go, what's that? And you go, I'll explain it later. To be fair, <laughs> you were wearing a prosthetic yes, set of tits. I it. So <laughs> I, I, it was I, Halloween. He, it was Halloween. I, I buried the okay, lead. Yeah, it was Halloween. It is. But I did not see a face. There was just a figure, yeah. a completely masked figure. Yeah, it around. was like some Halloween thing. And I and yeah, and he was like, so are we dressing up or something? And I was like, ah, go for it. He came out of full Spider-Man costume. <laughs> By the way, he's 15. We forgot to tell you guys. That's great, great, correct. And so, um, uh, yeah, that's so funny. He's uh, like a Star Wars dork computer programmer. Um, I was like, I don't call, I'm not gonna call you baby daddy. Like, what should I call you? He's a Star Wars dork. He was like, you, uh, what about Lord Vader? <laughs> <laughs> Instead of baby's father. Wow. He's like funny and, and just like he's a computer programmer. He's uh, a nerd. This nerd. is I this sweet. is what we do. This nerd. is how it works. Hot nerd. This is him in a nutshell. He, you know, I was having family, driving family somewhere or something. And um I know that's a word sentence that never comes out of my mouth. I'm trying to like reconnect with uncles and stuff and um uh -oh. i had I, know. <laughs> I thought you guys over connected <laughs> <laughs> and so what well, there's so many trees attacking me um and uh and i had dogs in the car and i was like you know what let's just there's a service where you can have someone come wash your car it's like 70 bucks let's just do that tomorrow and then at 11 o'clock at night i couldn't find him and couldn't find him i go outside he's vacuuming the car fully washing the car and i was like what are you doing and he was like i just can't stand the idea of another man washing your car well, how about a woman washing her pussy? <laughs> <laughs> He's like a Southern, like yeah. this traditional gender roles. This is my job. And I find that very hot. That's Wait, this, this makes yeah. so hot. There was a guy yeah. that I was Awful recently man. dating and um, I had a task rag rabbit come into the home. I didn't even like ask yep. him to assemble the, That's uh, like the him getting TV. A yeah. And he was like, I have to leave. <laughs> He's like, I'm so sorry, I can't be here. Yeah. And I'm like, what is it that bad? He's like, I cannot be as a man. I cannot sit here and watch another man Hot. do a job that was I could have easily done. Why didn't you come to me first? This Hot. is the know. opposite he left. of me and Dave. We have like these all these hot men that come and like hang frames and like Joe Meganello <laughs> just come in. <laughs> yeah. We just sit there. You're both like sharing the CPAP. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, Dave, like, should I be fucking that guy? Like, what am I doing it wrong? And it, we just we yeah. It's fine. Y'all have been together almost 10 years, right? Yeah. That is so wild. I know. It's crazy. How's Esther King going? <laughs> well, I it went back. It, we went back to Esther People Fitzky. think you, why? People thought you got married, first of all. Then did they think you got divorced? No, I don't think they think much. It, 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 I changed my name basically as a joke for a bit. Um, so more on that later. <laughs> but no, we're, we're just still. I'm just thinking in terms of taking names, what to name this baby. Like, it's, it's, it's well, I actually wanted to ask you, like, to name it Dave King. <laughs> <laughs> this is Esther King. Well, now that you're, you recently found out you're Jewish, I think that. Half. Easy. I think that what you have to do, and I am saying you have to, is name your baby with the same first letter as the name of one of your parents since they have recently passed away. I don't know what those letters are. I have are. to be reminded of those people? Yes, you have to honor them. That's e the Jewish. Or P. 
She's my initial. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, Eric and Patty. (laughs) I think that your baby's name has to start with one of those letters. Esther Pavitsky. I want to name. (laughs) I want to name him Hawkeye. So I don't know if that's gonna work. (laughs) That could be the middle name. That's a great middle (laughs) name. I'm dead serious. (laughs) Hawkeye. I. Cute. I. Hawk. Is so that's a Jewish tradition. Another Jewish tradition: circumcision. What are we doing? Are we doing that still? Dave says no. Yeah, I'm not doing it anymore. I don't. I don't. It seems seems mutilated. It's. Okay, so I come from a country where if you are not circumcised, you are humiliated, right? They call mm-hmm. you this term called pisot. And if what is it? Pisot. And it is your baby such dad. like is it the set, the, the, set, the set that's inside your pee. Yeah, it's kind of like a rite of passage, and they don't circumcise babies a lot in like the certain provinces. They don't do the glomco clamp like up front when they're babies. So they do it when they're seven years old, oh, and it's a whole ritual wow. you do as a community. They like Goodness. they, they put seems smash. more embarrassing. Than... It's fucked up. It's crazy. So like. Um, I have this idea growing up that I'm like, oh, if you're not circumcised, like you're just kind of lesser of a man. Right. But I've had a whole change of heart about Mm. it. I'm like, I don't think that I could physically like I want him to make that decision for himself. Right. Right. Um, But as women, like, do we have that reaction still with circumcised or non-circumcised dudes? I mean, there's a lot of metrics coming in that it's about the way it's done, that it can be really traumatic because it's like, imagine the first primary trauma of your life having your dick cut off like and your mom gives you to a stranger to for the biggest pain of your life and then everyone starts clapping like it is they're now and the going, rabbi like sucks the blood out or whatever they do i don't know is that <laughs> Wait, still happening? i don't know if they do it anymore because i think they were giving them her they look young <laughs> This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. And I have to say, I've got a lot going on up here. Mm-hmm. There's anxiety. There's low feelings. There's dread. Dread is a big theme in my life. And having someone to talk to is a really key part of my growth and my healing. And Whitney is not always available. So <laughs> not always. <laughs> we have to go to or Dr. Help. Drew. <laughs> yes. Whether you're dealing with decisions around your career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. And if you're thinking of starting therapy, you should give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. You just fill up a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no cost, no additional charge. And what we love the most about BetterHelp is it's such an easy first step into therapy. You don't have to drive, find parking, do all this research through, you know, BetterHelp handles all of the hard parts for you. And they have a little journal feature, which I love that I can jot down my heaviest thoughts in between my appointments that I can bring up in my next therapy. Oh, yeah. When I was rolling around last night, I had to put my little (laughs) notes in. Got to remember this for tomorrow. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash Trash Tuesday today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash Trash Tuesday. Wouldn't you say that life is more exciting when there are peaches involved, Annie? Oh, you know, I love peaches. I love peaches and cream. That's my favorite 112 song. I love that song. We got a 112 out. We have to have a sleepover, by the way. And And you will be drinking this during our sleepover and we will be watching you sleep. This is such a tasty summer drink. I've been having my little, you know, fancy single summer. <laughs> How do you say it? It's uh, single girl summer. Single girl summer. I've been having my fancy single girl summer, and this has been my go-to drink. It's really refreshing, um, and um, yeah, they have. They don't just have peach. They have mango peach. They have a couple other really good flavors. They have a variety pack which has all four of their fresh new flavors: signature peach, strawberry peach, kiwi peach, and mango peach. And simply spiked peach is the newest addition to the simply spiked family, joining simply spiked lemonade, which broke the internet when it dropped last summer with its four bold and refreshing flavors signature lemonade strawberry lemonade blueberry lemonade and watermelon lemonade and all flavors of simply spike are crafted with five percent abv and five percent real fruit juice squeezed then concentrated you know peach it gives like everybody that cute girly vibe i don't know i just like that for my summer that's gonna be my summer color peach and you can go to drinksimplyspike.com slash trash tuesday to find out how to get your hands on new simply spiked peach that's drinksimplyspike.com slash trash tuesday flavored beer naturally flavored with other natural flavors simply spiked co milwaukee wisconsin celebrate responsibly simply spiked is a trademark of the simply orange juice company
Wait, <laughs> wait, I also have to ask a question, like almost for advice as someone who is still uncertain if they want children. I thought or you were not. gonna say uncircumcised. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I will say about myself, I was uncertain until I was certain. Right. You know what I mean? I was like, I was date not dating fathers. I was dating people that would be like boyfriends that gave me adrenaline, recreated right. my childhood circumstances. I was dating people that were children that I had to raise. I right. already had, you know? So it was like, to me, as soon as I met someone who was a father, I was like, it doesn't even matter if this relationship works out. It's not about me. Okay, that's exactly. This is a father. I love that. So I basically told the girls um, a couple episodes ago that I don't care who I get pregnant by at this point. Like, I'm going to go ahead right. and deal yeah. with it. You're like, going to ha- keep it if you get deal pregnant. Deal with yeah. it. I yeah I I don't care anymore I don't care yeah. who it is if it's some fucking guy from a truck stop uh-huh. like it just is what it is sure. and I feel I think most. you're past your truck stop days too though <laughs> you would be surprised you know what I I love thick butted construction workers yeah 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 I'll never get over them give me a stevedore a longshoreman like that yeah, is what I like hot. okay but hot. here's my main question is like do you feel do, are you having any anxiety about like how people say there's only six good years left of the climate. Like the world is everything. Those people, who are you? What, Esther, what? So you're not, okay, That that's helpful to hear. You get your news in the belly room. So <laughs> you're looking, no. but it's like, yeah. So we're not too afraid about the- f- I think we've, humans have always been like this. So it was like in the twenties, they were afraid of trains and elevators and so, you know what I mean? Now saying? we're afraid of trans. So now, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, will there be no water? Who knows? Are they going to desalinate glaciers? Like who knows? I, I just think if you're always thinking in terms of that, you're in like a fear addiction. And I think that the smartest people are the ones that aren't procreating. So how are any of these problems going to get solved? But also like, like my life's been a nightmare. This baby can be born into a fucking nightmare. It's, they'll you'll deal with it. Can I say you know? though? Oh, you're not. So you're not. That's that's great for me to hear. The, you also helped me not be afraid of flying by saying flight attendants don't have cancer, so it's fine. So this is good. More on that, please. There are no cross-sectional studies <laughs> yet. You, we all have cancer. Let me just be very clear. <laughs> we all have cancer. You will get cancer. I think if you're constantly thinking about the things you're afraid of, they're just going to rule your life and I think for me uh, something really liberating happens after both of your parents die where you're kind of like okay now what you know and I think that I had no interest in having kids when my parents were alive because I already had to take care of them I wasn't able to um, break a lot of the cycles with them until they were gone Mm -hmm. and I was too afraid I was going to parent like them it just it just didn't feel right yet and here's another thing I'm going to say you're never going to get pregnant unless you're having a lot of orgasms and staying laid down so this is the first this is the best sex I've ever had in my life and I truly thought I was barren because that's what all the men on Reddit told me. Uh, <laughs> and I went off birth control in, which by the way, if you're on birth control, no judgment. Like now is not the time to be negative in any capacity on birth control. For me, I didn't realize how um, much of my brain it took from me. Like I, I was on it for so long. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then when I, because it tells your body you're pregnant. Fine. Right, it, right. In your 20s, better than being pregnant. It worked for me for a long time. But I after I went off it, I kind of got like very manic. Like I went off it right away. I went off Prozac as well. After my parents were gone, I was like, let me just like see who, what my baseline is. Mm -hmm. I've like lost track of even who I am chemically, hormonally. And you can't, um, basically your pheromones, uh, you know, you know, before you marry someone, you should always go off birth control and make sure you are still attracted to them for the same reasons, because it's like, you know, you smell pheromones differently when you're pregnant. So you want to make sure that you're still sexually attracted to the person, you know, before, Um, I talked about this in a special way more elegantly than that. So I went off birth control and I was like, oh, what are the chances that I would get pregnant? And then I started sleeping with a guy that just was like his kink was or giving yes. the woman Spring orgasms. Pie. Oh, not just, okay. Obsessed with it. And can and that's what makes you get pregnant. Like the being able to have orgasms. And then I would stay laying down, you know, and that's how it kind of happened. Because he held so you hot. down. I mean, we would joke about it. <laughs> we would, it's, hot, it's hot. But so then it happened. Like he's know? a man, but you're still the holder down. Or like, <laughs> you know, some things can't change. It, or just the idea of being with someone that you care enough about to be lying there and like talking afterwards and not just like getting up and being like, well, let me just, you know. I, I, that's how I was before. The I will sex say, was over, I, was gone. I will say that when I found out you were pregnant, I'm like so fully confident in your ability to like be a great mother and. 
and do like I'm I like didn't wasn't like when my friends tell me they're pregnant they worry you know like I go oh <laughs> totally, yeah. dude. I totally. just really like trust your ability. I see a lot of my friends that I used to really look up to and I see the way that they parent their kids and I'm just like dude I, like I mean even before I had a kid it's just sort of there's a great book called hunt gather parent and it's about you really have to let your kids have consequences you have to let them you can't solve problems for them and if it's going to take them 30 minutes to try their shoe you have to just sit there and let them do it because if you do everything for them I mean infantilizing a child that's technically what the word is you know means but you got to let them fall you got to let them make mistakes and i have a really i think an ability to do that adversity has benefited all of us like i have a good relationship with adversity um amanda knox who was on when she was over, we loved her she's uh, the best she's oh, the we best. loved her and the way that she would after the premiere at our house because she was on my roast you know, her daughter Eureka was like walking around the yard and she was just like letting her go, letting her walk. Eureka would turn around, and make sure she was, you know, still OK. Keep walking. She wasn't like was hovering over her. Yeah. Like, blah, blah. And, you know, I see these parents that take their kids to like a playground and they're like, and this is what happened to me, too. Be careful. D don't hurt yourself. Like, but just don't. Just... And I see the kids being like, why did you bring me here? Yeah. If it's dangerous. Ooh, why I, are you putting fear into I my head? I feel like that might be me because my mom was very like, she really projected all of her anxieties onto my sister and I. So I will really have to practice like pulling back. You'll have to like. Because even with my cycle. dogs now, I'm like, oh, oh. Well, you know, like I'm always just watching yeah. them. Because then you're just training them to be scared and then they stop trusting you because they're like, right. you're the one that brought me here. Yeah. So just bring me to the safe place where I can thrive. You know, as women right now, like there was an article, I think it was in the Atlantic about like women that like run businesses that are really successful and then they have kids and they run their kid like a business. Oh shit. And they put their type A shit <laughs> on their kid. And I see all these like LA moms are like, well, my six year old is in therapy. I'm like, bitch, you need to be in therapy. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you making your kid sit on a couch bored out of his mind? It's bored. You're yeah. bo you're no, it doesn't want to do all this shit. It doesn't want to go to these classes. It doesn't want to play all these sports. It just wants to play in the mud. But it's also illegal, I guess, now to let your kid just go outside without watching it. So I think there's Depends a Depends where. Yeah. That's why I want to raise kids in the Philippines. Still the wild, wild west. I just think it's like it's hard to like conflating like love and micromanaging are two separate things. But I think you just got to like give it play to the top of its intelligence. Yeah. yeah I feel like know? we were let out a little too much though as kids. Me and my brothers. We were the out bad things that happened to me were inside the house. Same. Yeah. Same. I was the safest when I was outside on the street at night. I was just like <laughs> out a lot. <laughs> you look baffled, Esther. More well, I just am. OK, I have another question about Please. my anxiety from, that I'm projecting onto you. Do you, you know a lot of your anxieties because you're short? I, we did go over this. I do agree. OK, but, I like Randy. But that's like a Yelp epigenetic flag. thing. Thank you. It's not my fault. Yeah. But do you now that you are pregnant, like, are you having a lot more awareness of like these toxic products and like micro they say people and that that's a yes. <laughs> people, there is something that happens where instantly you're just like, oh, I would have put myself in this situation a little bit longer, but now I just like, right. it's just, you know what I mean? Things start to get really clarifying. It's kind of nice. Products, same thing. It is wild, dude. I was like making a registry and I put like, like some baby powder thing. My friend was like, what the, f you can't use baby. Like you realize everything we Talcum. use as kids is just <laughs> yeah. gave us like yep. tit tumors. So <laughs> I think I'm trying to find the happy medium and not be, because oh, the worst thing for you is cortisol. And yeah. So nothing is going to be as bad for you as that internal medicine cabinet drug. But yeah, I mean, we're also breathing LA air. Right. You know? See, that's the thing. Like I, so I like stopped doing weed recently and I noticed while I was getting high, all of those anxieties went away and like life mm. was a lot more peaceful and I wasn't having Such those cortisol spikes. different world. <laughs> but like I, but now that I'm off of it, that stuff is kind of starting to come back up mm -hmm. for me. So I, yeah, it's just... Can I ask you a question about yeah. that? Yeah. Did you find that while you were smoking the weed, the anxieties went away? And then what happened when you weren't smoking it? Well, I've read about this, that weed does cause your anxiety to get worse when you are not high. So that's what happened to me is like when I was high, no problem. Yeah. And then when I wasn't, my tolerance actually went down and then I needed the weed more. Yeah. It's like the weed needs you to need it. So it's like nothing could have been better when I was on it. No problems, no stress. But then when I was off it, I was twice as angry as or, I'm sorry, anxious. That too. Um, uh, <laughs> it's as like kind of like rebound anxiety. Yeah. As I was before I even had the yeah. weed in the first place. So it's like the streams are more extremes are more extreme instead of kind of being like a little bit anxiety 
all the time, which is probably the healthy way to go. And did you struggle with like having to get off of weed because of the pregnancy? Or are you like happy that you're doing that? I had already gone off. I had already started to see a lot of negative consequences. Like I see how people, at least what they say is that weed is good for them and they're creative. Although all my friends that are like, I smoke weed to be creative. Like, where's the work? Yeah. <laughs> are you sure? They're like, I just smoke weed to write jokes. And you see their jokes and you're like, uh. <laughs> yeah, they call you at like 4 p.m. on Tuesday. You're like, is this yeah. work time? Yeah. Weed is like, can you stop bringing us up, please? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, it seems to work for a lot of people. I see a lot of people that are using it to check out. They're like, it makes my relationship better. It's like just being numb in a relationship isn't you're tolerating it. You're numbing yourself like, it, you know, so I was kind of sort of like, who do I really admire or look up to that's smoking weed all day? Like Snoop, like sure, whatever. <laughs> but for me, like, I think being able to realize like all of our brains and bodies and hormones are in traumas and past are different. And it just wasn't working for me the way it was. I was seeing other people like, yes, it would make me feel better as I was going to sleep. It made me be like, oh, I'm going to put my phone down and I'm just going to listen to these rain sounds. And it's fun for like a little yeah. vacation, but like as a lifestyle for me, it actually made me like kind of manic. I felt like I didn't sleep well at all when I would smoke weed. Like I would smoke weed, like it would maybe get me to the place of being like asleep, but not really sleeping. I think it's great so for like tired. every now and then yeah. as a fun thing to like, if it's you have a hard time coming out of your shell or at a party socializing, but this thing of like, every day at seven o'clock, just like lighting up was like, you know, and maybe I didn't figure out my sativa, indica, all of it. Like sativa was the one I was doing. It made me manic. Like this is how fast I talk. When I'm already intense. I'm already kind of like, you know, have a fast moving brain. It made me like so much more manic. It made me like so much more trying to socialize with everybody. I wanted to connect with everybody. And it was like, just like too much. Yeah. For me personally, I was also in a place of grief where I needed to be feeling my feelings and it was making me mask the feelings I needed to feel. So then anger was coming out in weird ways. And, you know, and then when I would do Indica to sleep, I wasn't dreaming. And I think that dreaming is really yeah. important to help deal with your anxieties and release yeah, pain yeah. and future planning. You know, so are you were you able to dream on it? I think I was able to dream, but then I've also read that like the sleep you get from weed is not really like efficient good sleep or something. Yeah, I think it's just like being dependent on anything. Yeah, it was is where I start to go. This might not be same. Right. That's what was scaring me. And then like reading about how it's bad for your brain or whatever. But now that you what are, was the bad? What what is that? It just bad. It's like supposedly like ages your brain faster. Uh, but so now that you are pregnant, you can't do the weed. No. Like what do you have? This is like what I'm dealing with now. Like just in general, like what do you go to to like kick back or like yeah. relax or like do you have anything that helps back that? to my workaholism dude it's like, <laughs> it was always there my when favorite drug dude kick, kick back write a book it kind of had <laughs> so crazy. you know i'm just starting businesses every night instead <laughs> um you know i think like, like i'm really glad i did it you know um but i think for you gotta like look at your rock bottom like my rock bottom was kind of like i felt like i made all this progress make more noise um i i know it's good are, are those back remember what were those videos where they the ASMR. Oh, the ASMR. Yeah, yeah. I actually love the sound of that, but um, I'm gonna pick if I did that on my podcast, I would get shot in the head. Um, I think for me, it's like I worked so hard to be able to have like boundaries in my life and to be able to hold them and go like, oh, I I can have love for this person. I can have respect for this person. But this isn't an everyday friend. This is like a our proximity of where we thrive is like here right. or like a family member that's like this is like a twice a year family member, whatever. And I felt like I was really able to be an acceptance um, of people, things, certain business arrangements that were like a healthy distance that mm -hmm. was best for both of us without any judgments, without, you know. And then I was smoking weed and all of a sudden it was like, what? It was just people <laughs> yeah. that I had not talked to in four or five years. I'm like, fly in, stay with yeah. me. <laughs> I was just like, I have no, it's not not having self-respect. Yeah. It's just, I, I have this weird short-term memory with right. weed. And then all of a sudden I'm saying yes to things I shouldn't be saying yes to. I just like let a lot of, not guards down, like I, you know, but just, uh, I got myself in a lot of jams. Yeah. <laughs> Smoking weed. I well, was just like. I feel like I've like done so much work on myself to like learn all these tools of how to take care of myself and have the life I want. And then I smoke weed and I'm just not. Whatever, I man. I have no access to those, all this work. I totally. Do, yeah. I loaned a lot of people. For everyone that was able <laughs> to get their debt paid off when I was stoned, like good for and you. she cannot remember who you are. Couldn't tell you. Good, luck. good job. Couldn't tell you. Wait. But like, I think for me, there was just like a little too much like of living in the moment. I think there's like a happy medium. It made me a little too chill. 
in a way that wasn't like protecting myself. I'm also not, I'm not a fun high hang. I'm I'm one of those. It's like, okay, so Alex Jones did say there was violence. <laughs> he did say it. So like I'm that guy when I'm stoned, you know? So I think it's just like I'm putting together pieces. I went hard into the Scientology maritime law thing. I like Wait, what is their maritime what? law? Well, like, so there's no laws on international waters. Which right. Is why billionaires always want to be on yachts because they mm. can pretty much do anything on international waters. What the it's fuck like, do they want to do out there? They kids and drugs and you know, farm farming organs i don't yeah, know this is what... why have you not heard of the lady who was um um doing abortions in on her ship because it was legal for her to do so because it was international water so she was providing women the service but couldn't she just do that in la no because a lot of countries uh, are you know okay. it's illegal okay. so she was taking this boat around which i thought was yeah really cool. oh wow yeah. that's wild yeah so it's like scientology the way they're able to operate their cult is basically to be on international waters they can have kids on international waters and like that's where they do it all and i got so upset like i think that the weed addiction turn I get into some justice addiction where like the yeah. grandiose uh um feelings of grandiosity where like I'm the I'm finding Shelly Muscat like I'm Wait, finding where her. is she though by the way who cares <laughs> no way that she's not the Serena Joy of this operation <laughs> she is no man could have built this thing without <laughs> the brunette she is the Serena a hundred percent I hope she's on the bottom of the fucking ocean with the Titanic billionaires. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't stop laughing about that. When billionaires off themselves that way, it just notice there were no women in that. That no, no. That, what, I'm like, what but the hell women is did bolt it tight. <laughs> <laughs> there was like you literally. <laughs> there's a video of women just bolting it, being like, ah, like an idiot. <laughs> um, I just think that no billionaire. I don't mean to laugh at someone's death. It's just there was a kid on it, whatever. But um, that no billionaire ever became a billionaire by not putting kids in cobalt mines or doing something awful yeah. or underplaying their employees. So. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like when they off themselves in such a hilarious way, I feel like it's a service to all well, of us. Well, their son is at a Blink-182 concert. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, totally. So I guess I just like, I, I look, maybe that's how people solve problems and change the world. They get stoned and like, I'm the one that's going to change the world. But when I get stoned, I'm like... I'm going to the border. <laughs> I just need to talk to them. <laughs> You're like the loan forgiveness lady. Yeah, like, I'm just like, I, the, I, the, I, literally, I, I started buying books on the guy that financed Hitler. And I, I just was <laughs> no, like, you showed me that book. Yeah. <laughs> I started like really, and I think that after you lose parents, you're also kind of rudderless. You're like, what's my purpose? Or mm, how like can I- the Nazis, I'll take them. Yeah, I literally was like- I'll get to I'm the like, bottom of this. Yeah, you know who no one's talked about? Hitler. Uh, <laughs> you think every idea you have is so original and mind blowing. Like I had this journal, like I would smoke weed, fall asleep. And I had this, I would like like lay with a, you know, a pad of paper and a pen and I would like scribble stuff. And I would think it was the most <laughs> genius shit. Yeah, ideas. I would They're wake ideas. up the next morning. It would be like, men and women are different. I'd be like, cool. <laughs> have, you, have you guys heard? I think it's called lymphocyte immunization therapy. No. So it's what they give, it's what they do with women who have repeated miscarriages. So they basically mm. take, so on a cellular level, the woman is rejecting the baby because of she's technically on a cellular level rejecting the man. Right. So uh, they take a bit of his white blood cells and I don't know what they do with it, but they basically inject it into the woman. So she has some type of um, um, what do you call it? She has like a, a vaccination. Yeah, like a va you're vaccinating yourself with your man's like white blood cells. And uh -huh. they do this for obviously women who are in, in vitro and who are getting repeated miscarriages. But I was thinking, you know how we were talking about the last time where you're like someone if someone's not a biological match and your body just sort of like rejects them. You don't like, like their, you breath, don't their breath. You don't like their a lot of times that means you're related. We Oof. Oh my but God, I was we're saying, getting to the bottom of Esther and Dave. Me and Dave, like there's a breath issue. Well, all you eat is pink berry. <laughs> <laughs> but Esther, all you eat is candy from Japan. <laughs> I was thinking maybe you could do this and see on a cellular level if you start to not reject each other. But 
I like his body smell, so that's good, right? That's good. Yes, that is good. But I, the breath, I yeah. But you guys you need to hire like someone to chew. You need to hire someone to chew your food. Hold on. Yeah. Has he been eating your pussy? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's the problem. That is- <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I hate his breath. <laughs> <laughs> Just hate your own stench. Sure. <laughs> I feel like breath. That's a tricky because I feel like also ten years in, you stop chewing gum and you stop kind of trying. Controversial yes. question: Do you love the way your pussy smells like on a man's mouth? every time or just half the time or a quarter of the time? Zero. Not every time. Is zero not an option? Time, right? Is not zero? every time. Sometimes I go, ooh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, I had a different idea of what was happening. <laughs> okay, same. Same. Because sometimes I think I'm fine and ooh, then uh, I smell their mouth and I'm just like, what the uh, fuck? Yeah. What is happening? Do you know how much your subscriptions are really costing Absolutely you? Absolutely not. It's terrifying. I don't want to know. I never know. I it's... want Rocket Money to take it over. Well, take they it from me. absolutely can do that because Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. And over 80% of people have subscriptions they forgot about, and chances are... You're like us and you're one of them. Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you. And for any you don't want to pay for anymore, just hit cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It's that easy. My favorite thing is that Rocket Money also helps you manage all your finances in one place. It automatically categorizes your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks off, which is really important. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. I can't believe that. That is so much. That is so much. I'm probably spending more and not even like. I probably do that a month. So it's scary. And now that we all have to have children to match Whitney, (laughs) we're going to need this money. Stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash trash Tuesday. That's rocketmoney.com slash trash Tuesday. Rocketmoney.com slash trash Tuesday. I will be less attracted to a man if he even is like shows a little bit of hesitation Ooh. on my dirtiest thing. Well, I told yeah. you that I went on a That's I, gay. You're gay. I dated a guy and then like after the first time we banged, he started saying it wasn't about me, but he would just like he was like, "Oh yeah, I have like a really strong sense of smell or whatever." Like he just mentioned that. And I was like, "I never want to fuck you again." <laughs> like I don't want someone who's like Someone that is just a, a beloved character, a gal in the this town. Um, when I first moved to LA, I met her, and I was I was just like I, I don't know whatever autism or Aspergersy Tourette's shit I have. Where I it was before I kind of knew how to just like ease into a conversation. I would just say the first thing. Like when I first met Samuel L. Jackson when I was twenty four at the Friars Club roast, I literally introduced myself and went how much money do you have like <laughs> I cash. love that Cat, and he answered That's too answer. answer. I... by the way I was like it was like a Tourette's thing where I just like I was like I don't have that much time with this person I'm just I don't gonna... have so much time with you how much does he make <laughs> he said he was like he I think he said it this was a while ago he was like 18 million but liquid right liquid like he literally <laughs> was like well liquid like he started breaking it down I was like this is well because you were curious Totally. And it wasn't some... like to use against him in any no. way. No. Yes. He didn't know me. I was just some nobody yeah. comedian. And then I kind of, I and then I was like, okay, you, you can't do that to people. It's weird. And, um, but, oh, so I met this girl that a lot of guys that I had dated, she like broke their hearts. And I was like, oh, so you're so-and-so. Like, you know, and, I, and it wasn't mean or like mean girly. I was like, so everyone in LA is in love with you. And I de- j- dead serious wasn't trying to be shitty. I was like, so what's your secret? Like, what is it? Like, you know, girls a lot of times say, like, say as little as possible. (laughs) You know, there's certain tricks. Right. And she goes, I put cherry chapstick on my pussy. She just said it. Katy Perry. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I would I that would throw me into a beastie yeasty so fast yeah because well, i was like so you're just messing up the bell curve for everybody right. so no one has a smelly pussy it's just compared to your cherry chapstick at because there's also the nostalgia yeah of can thinking, you tell like, us afterwards who it is yeah okay yes i can i mean should we try i feel like my pussy would not take i did the medicated well. one and no one liked it <laughs> um <laughs> the boric acid. why do they even make that <laughs> bliss next the black cherry chapstick that's just like um <laughs> <laughs> it smells like pussy actually um but yeah she would just like put it on her pussy lips so a guy would go down and smell it it makes sense 
I just take Gwyneth Paltrow's vagina candle and I just rub it on my pussy. <laughs> with the guy. And it if you don't like it, it's anyway. her. <laughs> I remember one time, this was like very traumatic. Like when I was very insecure and or would only date guys that I felt like I had to earn their approval. Who cares? But I would use like the deodorant like secret or whatever. And for whatever reason, he went to lick my armpit. And I would always watch guys out of the corner of my eye what they were doing. Like even if I was kissing a guy, I'd be like, my eyes would always be like half open, you know? And he went to lick my armpit and I just watched him go. <laughs> <laughs> like, have you ever licked deodorant? Yeah, like, it's so disgusting. weird. Oh. <laughs> I was just like. That guy has cancer now. Yeah. <laughs> For pure sure. aluminum. It's like, so, yeah. So deodorant, all that kind of stuff. I don't, I don't know. But I definitely, if I'm going to hook up with a guy, I'll wash it. Yeah, sink. I'm a scrubber. Yeah. Quick. Yeah. yeah. You have to exfoliate that. And you have to really get in there because toilet paper will, will get balled up. And oh, I know. Big J has a funny joke about that. <laughs> it looks like a. <laughs> He goes, when you go down on a girl and it looks like she has like, it's like a, um, oh, no. a G.I. Joe cigarette. Because <laughs> <laughs> sometimes in the flabs, yeah, they'll, they get you'll be there. like, oh, no. I literally am experimenting with new toilet papers because I'm trying to find one that doesn't do that. Well, I toilet paper, you're supposed to pat. You're not supposed to rub. That's the other thing. Are you sexually active during this pregnancy? Dude, sex is better when you're pregnant. Say Because there's so much blood flow. It's wild. What? It's wild. Really? You can, I, 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 I've just never been able to have orgasms very easily. Why are bananas coming th in here? <laughs> no, what is, is what, what part break. of the show is this? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Did you just hear that bananas have radiation? All of them? I, oh. You're going to roll your eyes. Uh, you're no, going to roll I'm, your eyes. I'm exhausted in general at that. No, I, I believe you. I'm so, I'm just, I'm, I'm at a loss. But like, you'd have to eat, lenses. you'd have to eat so many. Okay, I think, that's me though. Better. I eat two bananas a day. At once? Well, you're embalmed. You shouldn't look this young. <laughs> I mean, maybe that's why. Oh my God. Tell me more about this. So. I don't, I, I've literally known, they call me Ho Rogan for a reason. Um, I don't know who was talking about it. There was someone talking about nuclear energy or no, it was RFK Jr. I think when he was on Rogan, mm -hmm. he was talking about radiation and things. And I guess there's some bananas. I don't know why. Does he have a shot at being president? No. You don't think? No. Really? He is Connor from Succession. He has that chance. <laughs> he has that chance. I don't know. Right there. There's no chance. That's what I said about Trump. I feel like I, I'm standing by this. Even though I love I love the Kennedys. I just watched a whole docuseries Why? on them. I, they're, they're like the original Kardashians. <laughs> Joe Kennedy is the original Kris Jenner. Like it's, it's teeth instead of ass. <laughs> they're, it's so awesome. Also, RFK's dad, Bobby, is the hottest Kennedy in my opinion. Right, right, right. He was assassinated, yeah? Yes, right. the second to be assassinated. Yeah, I think there's something interesting about someone who's like just asking a bunch of questions and who is totally like like the CIA is a criminal enterprise. Here's what they've done wrong. He was a lawyer. I mean, he sued Monsanto. I, I don't know. think people want, but he's not a politician, which I think people like about him. I, uh, oh, RFK. Do you guys know that I met- He's a lawyer. Ted Kennedy at my great uncle's funeral. You did? What, yeah. What, was there a connection? My great uncle was a uh, ambassador to India. His, he was a famous economist, John F, uh, F or wait, no, John, not John F. Kennedy. Um, oh. Wait, John Galbraith. Oh. That he's famous. Yeah. You know, there's a comedian I, whose cousin, you know, Earl Skakel. Yes. Yeah. He's a Skakel. His first cousin is RFK Jr. And you know the Skakel story. The rant, rant, rant. What's rant, rant, rant? The murder in Greenwich. No, I don't know It's this. a murder thing. It's the Kennedys, the, the one thing I will say about the Kennedys, a lot of catastrophes seems like you guys, the common denominator to you guys. No, that's true. I've heard this. It's You're like kind of like the Marilyn Monroe thing, the, the Chappaquiddick. It seems like you guys are chaotic. They were raised like under, like the patriarch of the family, like wanted them to be risk takers and bold. And so like that is their energy. And I don't know, like they're, you're not wrong. It's just, it's a lot of debt. I mean, the, what was the, the guy that died in the plane crash? Assassinations yeah. probably don't count, but it seems like a lot of drunk accidents, but there was a lot of alcoholism in the family. And I think they are like, we're sober, but there's a lot of feuds within, like there's the sister who's against him coming out against, it's a lot of like infighting. Yeah. So they seem like a, they're rough with each other. Which How much is, money do they have? I'm not as Kardashian-like as you. But we'll get there with the Kardashians. You think so? Yeah. You also, think there's yeah. got to be murders and scandals? No, I think that like in the future, once the matriarch goes, I think we'll see feuds. Are you kidding? We're already... I Here's the thing. I have a new take on the Kardashians. Like, 
imagine you're Kourtney Kardashian and your little sister is Kim and she's always in the spotlight. Like, I don't know if you're watching the new season, but I just, I think that we will get more Kennedy-like from them. I'm wearing a good American jumpsuit. It's hot. I, good I American's have, so good. Uh, Skims, amazing. Skims, I love American. No complaints. I am a consumer of everything they make. Highly love. I, I vow. What's my... the, I, I, I like the businesses they've built and I don't, and I like that their bodies look like their bodies. Like I, you know, my, in my formative years as a teenager, I was looking at like Kate Moss on the cover of magazines, which I think was. No, like, I agree with they Despicable. What they did for like body dysmorphia is amazing. Like Kim being on the cover of magazines with like, yeah, I have cellulite. Who cares? Yeah. It's like amazing. But they also I... did do a lot of like BBL. Like, but they don't hide that, of... right? I think people do they that. But then they, and then they, then they got really skinny they do a lot of like it's i think it's kind of hard on people like it's the diet of, but it's I think going back and forth what i'll say the only thing i'll say about that and this isn't but whatever, it is good it's i better don't know it. enough about it and it's not i don't know if we have any metrics of causality um i think all this stuff existed before them etc if they're not making money off these diet products some guy's going to. yeah you know, mm -hmm. someone's gonna there's always gonna be diet culture there's always gonna be women hating their bodies like it's like with and without so i don't know i think that like they, they do model this like shamelessness that's just like get yours yeah, yeah. you know and you know, I don't know. I think it's kind of like it's business. It's capitalism. Like we're mad at everyone that makes a lot of money selling shit. Yeah. Jackie but Kennedy had the one. cutest mouth ever. What Jackie, did you like the... about it? She just has these cute little teeth. She's I just think Jackie Kennedy as a first as like a young first lady. We're not talking about it enough. I don't think we're talking enough about this obsession with Marilyn Monroe instead of the woman that she blatantly slept with her husband in front of. This is a blondes versus brunette. Of yes. Old as, old as time. She but is she a button. Cute. Guys, my he. mom, my mom dropped a meatball on her shoe. She was serving. <laughs> she was over at my grandparents' house. And my mom, my grandmother was like, you have to meet them. So she made my mom the... Um, like server of the food and my mom was so nervous that she she like <laughs> dropped and it was like not it was like a perfectly matched shoe like, <laughs> oh situation. sick yeah she was like super chic the forehead looks odd at this angle oh. um tricky well his looked even worse yeah next to her. I uh, but yeah i mean it is weird when you look back and you're like look i'm have an obsession with marilyn monroe too but we're just like she just jackie was in the front row and she's like ha baby no jackie Yay. wasn't there oh really she didn't go even shadier I, she knew not to go she the, see I always thought that the Marilyn Monroe JFK affair was just like us as a country like fantasizing about what mm, could have been but mm, it's it seems like it was real very real I cannot believe that it yeah. seems like fan fiction to me mm, did you see the movie Blonde oh my god we're all from the abortions <laughs> point of view. there was literally a shot from the fetuses it was of being wild. aborted I we can't let her die why can't but we let that movie yeah. also is based on a fiction is historical fiction yeah so that it's yeah. just trauma porn like it's just yeah. exploit Wild. yeah but it's very well executed like it's it was incredibly interesting well made her performance is amazing but the one thing about well, Marilyn Monroe that it, Marilyn Monroe didn't have a Spanish accent like Ana de Armas she didn't have an American one either <laughs> nothing she said made any sense and all these quotes on Instagram she didn't say any of this shit and the shit she did say she sounds like an asshole like don't show up until you're ready to show up make him wait two hours you're like this person's an asshole <laughs> what are we doing also his wife is waiting for him get there yeah exactly <laughs> what are you doing get this over with um but it was remember when your oh, a confluence of your two favorite when kim kardashian wore marilyn monroe's dress. oh that was weird oh, the that was a huge deal for i feel like that was like a wild week for you it was so exciting how did like, you deal with that oh my god that was just like the most thrilling moment in american culture and the fact that people were hating on it i'm like you guys don't get it like this is so important who cares <laughs> it's a th why not we're talking that's is exactly what they want us to do I she's know. a genius she's a pr genius i Kim. know and it's only honoring Marilyn. like what should Marilyn's dress just be hidden in some museum nobody's gonna go to like i thought it was well executed amazing. wasn't it at a ripley's believe it or not yeah, yeah nobody like, goes there like, it oh. did ripley pretty bad in the time <laughs> after. who is your dream person that kim should date I feel like you're really good at coming up with who someone. Well, I liked the rumors about her dating Van Jones because I was like, oh, let's let's have her lean even further into her like lawyerly political, yeah, 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 you know, thing. But I also could see her doing really well with a big athlete. What did you think of Again? the Tom Brady rumor? The what? Oh. What did you think about the Tom Brady rumor? 
He's not not it. Yeah, yeah. he's not it for me. I feel either. like Pete no. Davidson. I felt like that was gonna go on long. I did too, but Dave told me I was crazy. Do I thought you, that was gonna be it. By the way, he went. You brought him up on that episode that just came out. Yeah. And then he went into the hospital for mental health issues. You predicted another one. Oh, oh. no, I did not mean to. <laughs> My powers. I am so sorry. <laughs> did you say something uh, that predicted that he this? was gonna date? Yeah, Lila. he. Oh, yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Even more encouraging. Yeah. It makes sense that he checked himself in. <laughs> no, it's just whenever we. A lot of the time, we getting ready. Talk about someone. Something wild. Like happens. Annie brought up Ray Liotta two and days he, later, dead. Like uh, it always comes out. He's the day dead. <laughs> yeah, Cocaine Bear was his last movie. I do think it was weird. Like when remember when Pete Davidson was like dating all those famous women, and everyone was like, he's got a big dick. He does. Yeah. But yeah. isn't that, w imagine if we were like, like, her pussy's huge. No, or what if we're like, Emma Stone is a small pussy, I'm yeah. next. Like, it's just like weird how we <laughs> do that. Well, you know what it was? It was because I think guys were, guys are like looking at him, they're like, how is this oh, guy getting yeah. these girls? There's gotta be something that we're missing. Well, it was Ariana did it. Ariana, and Ariana did it in the song. She coined the term yeah. big dick energy. I think anyone's her. dick is big around her pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I but is that a stretch? <laughs> yeah, because one of my most petite friends has the most massive pussy. Really? She is. I'm the... right here. <laughs> <laughs> She's even smaller than you. She is. She maybe weighs like 90 pounds, and she was like, "Kalila, I'm a size queen," and not because this is not a choice I'm making. Like, it can just swallow. I have the biggest pussy. It's I very wide set. I always figured if you were small, you must have. Is that's. Am I dumb? She says no. She's like, no, like I need massive dick because I feel like my pussy is a very wide runway and I need it to be filled. Yeah. So I who was I talking to? A, oh, someone we know who said they have a really deep pussy. Um I have a I have a tilted uterus. So I have a So very, do I. Uh, yeah, so I have a very shallow Exactly. Pussy. I, it's uncomfortable for me past a certain size. No. Yeah. Like they, I might have that thing Megan Trainer has, where it's it's not like I have a small pussy because it's just the way my uterus is. Vag All seen your vagina, everyone. In yeah, the <laughs> anyone that's come to your house. I mean, after having a kid, I don't know. I don't even know. I think I don't know. Do you think in terms of like gun to your head, are you like childbirth? Terrif I've, want to so do it? I had. Terrified. I've been lucky enough to to watch both C sections, emergency C sections, regular C sections, and um, live birth for myself. I would hope that if I can do live birth that I will do that. Yeah. Because the C section is my God. Like it really scarred me watching them. Especially the emergency ones. Scarred and them also even worse. Yeah. But also like the um you get to go home much sooner when you do a live birth. It's just it also better for the baby. It's just like gives it more you know it's so weird. I met I went to Ben Glebe this is weird too. I went to Ben Glebe's party. That wasn't the, the weird part. The running for president one? Yeah. <laughs> and so, I the mean, rally? I got to give Ben this. He does. I laugh very hard around Ben Glebe. He, yeah, he's, laugh, the best. he's so fucking funny. <laughs> he tells me stories and I'm like crying laughing. He is hilarious. <laughs> but I went to his, his house for a party and there was a woman in a hat. And he was like, oh, let me introduce you. Have you met her yet? And I didn't know who it was. And she turned around and it was Ricky Lake. And I went, oh, my God, I've seen you give birth. <laughs> and she did not care for it. And immediately walked by me. And I was like, oh, because she had she made a, a documentary. documentary. Yeah. The business of being born yeah. all about how hospitals will force will force C-sections to like move you through the system faster. And um and that, but she was not the first person <laughs> in the movie that I fucking saw. I was a waitress in New York and the really badass midwife that they had on there, they showed her birth and she was like really cool. She, she was a crazy girl, like a Brooklyn bitch, but she, and they watched and she had like a really crazy painful home birth. And she was like, mm -hmm. I was like weirdly starstruck when I met her, but it's like, you don't, I was like, how do you tell someone? Yeah. Uh, I've seen your pussy like your pussy? stretch. I Maybe know. there's not a how and it's just you don't. I'm a fan but of I did. And look, experience. I'll tell you, I struck out with Ricky Lake. So Ricky, <laughs> my bad, but you did put yourself out there. Okay. I've seen you in a tub. I should have done on OnlyFans. <laughs> I know someone who, number one, she tore in 13, 13 inches. She had to get the... That's uh, Kalila's short friend. <laughs> <laughs> she had to get the vaginal um, rejuvenation, rejuvenation thing. thing, and she went to the doctor that does it, and he said, size-wise, would you like to go back to 16, 18, or 21? 
Ew, that's disgusting. <laughs> that is is that like a, a gauge of like the earrings, those little stretchers? <laughs> like, I, it... I, I, I don't know what the logic is on that. No, but made... that is so gross. Do they? Do you guys think there's a huge difference between 16 and 18? They do, the and I'm going to your... tell you this because I talk about this with my guy friends a lot. Like, they're like... Like they're so gross, and I'm like, okay. To be fair, they're mostly autistic. Yes, severely. But like the we reason that younger women, I this is my theory: when guys fuck younger girls and they think they're more wet than when they fuck someone like more age appropriate, I'm like, it's because the age appropriate woman is like, why am I fucking this loser? And the young girl, <laughs> the 18 year old, the wet is tears. The, yeah. And the young girl is turned on because you're a fetish to them because you're an old loser. Like, so that's hot to them. Your guy friends are not a fetish to anyone. No, it's <laughs> you can't get a woman who's 40 wet with your yes. personality. Yeah. Yes, on you. It, yes, yeah. they're it's a little bit gusted by the fact more. that they're fucking you. No, anyways, back to birth. <laughs> are you scared? Like, what, how, are you yeah. terrified because I feel like I'd be like just keep it in me forever like I'm too scared it's I will ne once you start seeing on sonograms now you see their face like y I'm like I want this thing I want to see this <laughs> now like it's just once it's you know in you and you see it on the sonogram you're like let's go it's got feet it's got hands like now I'm just like excited to see this little idiot um but it's terrifying I know that our bodies know what to do but I am fine with the okay you're 40 you might have to do a C-section. That might just be the safest thing. And You're going to be editing the roast still. <laughs> <laughs> and then so I'm like, I'm fine either way, but I'm very pro epidural. I'm very pro so doctors. Yeah. I'm not having a baby in yeah. a bathtub. I'm pro a live baby. Yeah, I like, dated uh, a pediatric anesthesiologist who worked in Portland, and he said he they would lose five, six babies a day to umbilical cord around the neck from yeah. people having births at home. Yeah. Like if What? You, yeah, if you can have yeah. a staff of people there and a doctor on staff and do it at home, like Godspeed, but I'm big on yeah, like- Yeah, it happened to my friends, uh, her like old roommate. They lost a baby that way. Uh, having birth at home? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, but the great news is that when you do it, someone gives you a check from a, a trophy. Like nothing, yeah. nobody gets points. No one's like, cool, you're better than us. You know yeah. what I mean? So I'm, uh, I'm just gonna like cross that bridge when I get to it, but I'm just going like, I, I'll be on drugs. Yeah. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm like, I get, I'll just get through I, it. I'll I, be on drugs. I can't imagine even having a birth plan that's just like towards natural. Uh, give me the epidural. Just uh, because it's also, epidural. it's like women used to die. And yeah, but I've also like endured enough trauma in my life. I've endured a lot of pain. Like this doesn't have to be a new trauma. And I the acquire... way you enter the world is apparently, I remember <laughs> this is when I stopped working with this trauma therapist because she was like, okay, we've done so much work on your adult traumas, your childhood traumas. Now let's address um, the trauma of you being born. And I was like, um, I've done this work, but it is for real, dude, you on, come out, dude. you go from being warm to being cold. If it's the doctor holds crazy. you upside down, doctors yeah, used to spank Spain. you. Also, doctors used to separate babies. Mm. They would, you know, it should go skin, skin to skin, skin right, right yeah. away. Babies used to go somewhere else. They couldn't see their mom. Right. And that's the one thing about the C-section that really bumps me is I don't want to be on such drugs that when I first told my mm. baby, I'm like on Percocet or some crazy shit because it's not just well, the epidural. Well, you can watch it on OnlyFans. So it'll be fun. <laughs> That's true. Um, and so, oh, and then you have to be on painkillers for a couple days after, yeah. I think. So it's like, I don't really want that. But like us being, when we were born, like shit was different and spooky. Well, I called my mom because I was like doing this work um, about, you know, my birth and stuff. And uh, I was like, was my birth traumatic? And she was like, Annie. So my mom, well, you're so I'm a twin, right? So I'm a twin and we were vaginal birth which they would never do now. Wait, but really? my mom, yeah, my mom went in, yeah, because it's it's like a high-risk pregnancy. Twins don't do vaginal? Mm -mm. What? They would just, it would be. A, it's like a bulldog giving birth. They just have to cut them out. <laughs> cut us out. <laughs> but so my mom said she went to the doctor and was like, I'm not leaving until I have these kids. Like it was like, I think a day after our due date or something or whenever it was like appropriate for twins. And so they gave her like an epidural. And then she said everything was like, seemed fine and then all of a sudden when my dad left and there's no cell phones or anything to go get like a hamburger or something everyone's heart rates went down and it was like an emergency and yeah, she's like yeah. panicking and my dad wasn't there and then my brother came out and then i was breached so that there was a doctor just in her trying to like yep. twist me around and she said that he was like really forceful yep. she she had an epidural and she could still feel it mm -hmm. so she was like panicking and your dad wasn't there and my dad my dad did get back in time for that but but you're getting and then pounded I came with out, adrenaline cortisol right and then i come out feet first and i like ingested some of the fluid so then 
I was, they came back in and they're like, she's having trouble breathing. And my mom's like oh. freaking out about that. And then I was in an incubator. So I was with a twin. And then for seven days, I had to be in an incubator. And seven they would come, days? Mm -hmm. That's not good. Like whole week. So that's why I'm like this. <laughs> <laughs> you took in some meconium. That's, that's a big deal. Money. I mean, it's like your first memory of the world. Yeah. You know, it's like imagine true. that. Like even yes. if you took in some meconium, you te technically, the first thing you did was eat shit. Yes, eat shit. And then also I came out ass first. <laughs> and, and like this um, is my best feature. I just yes. want everyone to know that now. Hi guys, but um, and I was probably fingered by the doctor. We've been through this it's like a tefurkin. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and then like you know that must have been so like, and then my fam, the like I my family was probably really like scared and upset too. So it was, yeah, and then you're just being bathed in those yeah. chemicals and stuff. So it's like it's like most people don't have time to get through their childhood trauma, their adult trauma, their trauma from this morning or yesterday. But I just yeah. am sort of like, how do I make this as copacetic as possible and bringing my ego into it being like, I'm not going to use any epidural so that I can tell everyone yeah. I'm yeah. tough. Like, I don't think anyone's, you know, gives a shit, you know, yeah. it's like, how can I make sure this is like smooth and like, yeah. I have as few surprises as possible. Like I have friends that are like, oh, this one friend of mine, her dude was filming and she tore and the baby gave birth tore he said i'm no longer attracted to you after oh, watching you give birth which that's makes, a thing that makes him so disgusting mad. but also women spend so much time trying to not poop when they're giving birth right. that's another thing so i'm kind of like only certain people are allowed in the room i'm not gonna like i'm gonna shit I'm gonna the be goal is to take a shit because when you push, you're pu you poop yeah. like that, and then yeah. eating is what gets things moving. You know, they say that the thing that um, induces labor the fastest is sex. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which is kind of amazing. You fuck the doctor, um, <laughs> but yeah, like I just I know myself, and I know that I'm gonna be like taking care of everyone and make sure everything was okay, and like you know. So I think I'm like I'm just my birth plan is really just making sure there's only a couple people really allowed in. Like, can I submit my resume? <laughs> I think I, I will not become less attracted to you if you shit, I swear. <laughs> and like, she is at shit level too. <laughs> <laughs> right there. And they're saying you shouldn't do as many baths. Like they would take him to do baths all the time. You don't need all these baths. Like, I don't know. And then there's like big baby, whereas they're trying to sell you all this shit yeah. just to be like, and you need to collect these cells as soon as you give birth. Yes. And you need to cut the umbilical cord to put these in a bank. I mean, you're rich blood. blood. Yeah, but no, I'm, the reason I have money is because I don't fall for shit Because you like don't this. buy you know what I'm saying? I don't, yeah. They're mm -hmm. just like, and you need to put your placenta in a smoothie and snort it. Into, and you're just like, no, thanks, dude. I don't want any of this shit. So a lot of it is playing, is playing defense against people that are trying to prey on the fact that you're scared. You know? Um, okay. I would just... Oh, I'd be so Would you bad. ever adopt? I was looking into adoption before this. I always, I do feel like having your own kid is like buying a dog from a breeder. <laughs> it does feel raw. It's so not me. Like I was looking at, um, I was looking at. Well, if the kid comes out and bites you, it'll be like you. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> and there is a friend of mine who is dealing with her kid. It won't stop biting her. Oh, God. <laughs> Adopted? No. Oh. No. And I also, it's like the way you are when you're pregnant is going to decide what kind of epigenetic it is epigenetic imprinting your kid gets. So I am like, there is just this imperative, like when you're pregnant, you're just like, I'm calm. Like I'm not, the things that used to like adrenalize me and freak me out, like I just had this really rough business situation. I'm like, all right. Like there's something kind of nice about it. There's some yeah. kind of like, like grounding about it. There's something, it's also like really nice to not think about yourself all the time. There's yeah. something sort of, you don't realize like, oh, I can think about something else or someone I, else. I do see that in some of the, the um the women that I see that don't have kids where I'm like and I think that about us I've said this about us too it's like we're like na like naturally we're supposed to have kids at this point at our age as animals and it's like we're not we're supposed to be focusing on something else that's not ourselves mm. the way I treat my dog I'm like oh I should have have a kid like I <laughs> okay so that's obsessed. a question I wanted to ask you because we that. ask each other this all the time um do you think that you love your kid more than your dog? It's a different kind of love. It will be a conditional love. <laughs> Whereas the love for dogs is unconditional. Perfect answer. Yeah, I I don't know. I think I don't think there's anything wrong with conditional love between humans. And I don't mean your, my love's going to go away, but it's like you don't get to talk to me like that and you've lost the privilege of being able to talk to me. My dogs never lose the privilege of being around me. My dog my dogs so never true. my dogs never get punished for something. They never you know, because they're also trained and they 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 just want to make you happy. But the problem is 
kids like they want to test you that's part of their job that was part of our job when we were teenage yeah. girls and we were assholes to our moms we were testing them you know you have to test your parents you have to make sure are you safe can i trust you the biggest thing that i'm dealing with right now is do i tell them about santa him sorry i'm sorry i'm not he's not a they yet <sighs> um sorry this is la i have a pitch please when i was babysitting this is what the mom did and i loved it um you talk about Santa like it's a story and we play pretend that Santa comes. Okay. It's like a fun story and it's not, what? We've talked, no. What, I, bitch? Believing <laughs> in Santa Something was the that, most special, Exactly. It was so gorgeous, freaking magical. No, magical I could cry thing that thinking I about. ever had in my life. Thank you. And it was Thank worth no, the She's like sitting on pain. Santa's lap at the mall with a <laughs> oh highlight. God, when, right. I that is out, <laughs> when I found out. My mom was so liberal. She always took us to the black Santa. So we were like, <laughs> that wasn't a real Santa. <laughs> we were like the white kids. Like, <laughs> when everyone else was trying to tell me that Santa wasn't real, it made me appreciate all the effort my parents put in to yeah. making the sounds over the roof like there are a lot yeah. of horrible things that happened to me as a child and yeah. that was my one oh it like, was happy so place sweet. i could go to it was just so sweet my brothers and i would all go up to my older brother's room and my mom would put hershey kisses up the stairway going down and my parents bawled out on christmas like i was hey, very I lucky i was that. so I spoiled that. on christmas and it was like we'd go down and we'd we'd get our stockings first and bring them into our parents' room. And my mom would like try to disguise her hand. Like my mom went all out. Like as much as my mom like ignored me in weird places in my life, she like I think one place it. that it that there's room for improvement with the Santa of it all is using it as a surveillance tool to manipulate kids, being like, if you're naughty or not, you're oh, gonna get right. more presents. You're gonna you're nice. really appreciate oh. that at one but point. You, I, 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 I don't want to <laughs> elf on the shelf, the elf's watching you. But you don't have to you don't have to use that storyline. My parents mm -hmm. never did uh, the naughty, none of that. I didn't yeah. even know about that till I came to America. Santa yeah. just existed. You yeah. guys, you know what they do with, with one of my, with my nieces in law, one of Todd's babies? They'll, they'll go, the cops are coming. She's no, like, I mean, there's so many <laughs> things they use on these kids. There's a <laughs> range of shit you can do. Yeah. But I know a friend of mine um, uh, one time uh, was walking <laughs> along the beach and um, uh, Mary McCormick and uh, she, her kids were like, we want to go to the beach. And she went, honey, the ocean is broken. <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, oh man, just like next time. Um, but uh, I, I as a kid, I guess I had the opposite experience because I feel like my parents lied to me so much that it was just like another weird another lie, lie that I couldn't lie, figure out because I'd be like, lie. he comes down the chimney, like we don't have a chimney, bitch. And then it was all like, don't talk to strangers and don't. And I was like, so there's a man coming into our yeah. house in the middle of it's the night. Scary. It spooked me. And then I also was like, I think kids are smarter than we give them credit for. And I, I found I was like, this is the same handwriting as my dad. Yeah. And like, at least change your handwriting. Well, I, I remember with like the tooth fairy feeling, cause my dad like, and I knew, you know, like you just get to the age where you're like, oh, this is all fake, but you want to believe it. And my dad lifted my head up to put, to take my tooth. <laughs> and I was like still up, but I was like pretending to be asleep. And then I remember chasing him cause my dad would walk to the train station. I like chased him down and I was like, I was like crying. And he's like, what? And I was like, the tooth fairy only left me 50 cents. He would love it like a half dollar. I was like, I thought I'd get more. <laughs> the tooth fairy's a cheap bastard. I like, know, like, oh, he's Jewish. Um, just kidding. Um, but it was like, but I remember that like feeling of like, it just felt like a loss of innocence. It didn't feel, yeah. I didn't feel like the full betrayal of it. I, I don't know why like it it's also, I, uh, I also don't want to have the kid who goes to school. And tells everyone. He, I, that's going to be my kid. 100%. Maggie, I remember you. I didn't tell people. I did not ruin it for other people. Are we sure? Oh, for sure. I wouldn't. I was not an asshole. Like, I knew that some <laughs> people thought it was real. But, did and, you never believe in Santa? No, I did. But I remember I was smarter than that. And I was like, mom. <laughs> or your parents didn't really sell it. <laughs> yeah. I, I was just like, tell me, mom, just fucking tell me. Like first she started by opening up about how the tooth fairy was slap you for cursing? No, wait, why? <laughs> I never had a I formal had conversation. No. There was never a formal conversation. I don't remember what it disintegrated or anything. I think it was just like my parents for Christmas gifts, they would just wrap up shit around the house that was already there. So I'd be like, yeah. how did Santa yeah. get this ashtray but see, my from dad your bedroom? Was super creative. Um, That's he cool. would hang things in the backyard on a tree and be like, oh, look, like he would have us do this hunt of where Santa just dropped the presents. It wouldn't, oh, that's cool. not all of them would be under the tree. He would hire my uncles to make the sounds on the roof. Like, okay. But we didn't have you, money. So I'd be like, can Santa bring groceries <laughs> like in November? Yeah. Let me ask you this. Did you ever yeah. do Easter egg hunts? Yes. And, and mm -hmm. you didn't really think the Easter no, bunny. So I will say this. And that was so fun. My most 
the magical part was not that I fully believed in this man. The magical part was the experience of knowing that maybe, you know, my parents were involved, but there was this thing I could write a letter to every yeah. year that I could be excited about because gifts would come and we could all be together and celebrate. So it was just exciting. I Not because like this, you know, person existed that I had yeah. full faith in. And my older brother, like... In my version, you could have that. It's cute that my older brother, <laughs> like, knew before us and then, like, kind of, like conspired with my parents yeah. to like keep it really fun for us so you're so. saying esther just tell the story yes you tell the story of santa claus and What's then the story well i don't know but <laughs> you make toys in a in an article? yeah or you watch a movie and you're like santa's gonna come and you just like it's like i don't know it, just like play pretend but i had i've like like i the, to a fault that my Tourette's of whatever of like it'd be like he goes to every house in one night yeah I was it like, doesn't make sense i was like that yeah. at like six and i was just like what there's no chimney so like i couldn't just like and it's weird because later i fantasy was my primary drug to cope before like you know eating stuff or control issues you know you know other family members use drugs or alcohol mine was checking out into fantasy wait so like maladaptive daydream yes yeah that's all i did too i would write journal entries it as saved other my people. life but i also think that's why you're successful and I went into writing. I went into being an imaginative person. But it's almost like yeah. I had the ability to dream so big because I lived in such a fantasy world because I wanted to check out of my reality so hard that in a sense, like, there is a level of, like, hate to say it, manifestation there. Yeah, yeah, Because you believe truly. it so strongly because that world is so comforting You're to just you visualizing yeah, it. Yeah, you are just visualizing it. I used to do it. a weird thing where I would, like, I would just imagine myself if I wasn't me. And that would make me like where I was. Like I go oh, like that breaks my heart. Wait, what I do you would mean? go like I would just go. I would go like, what if I was like, what if my body was put into like my neighbors, and I was like living in my neighbor's house, and it made me like like being in my. I always like, pretended I was in commercials. Really? Like I. Oh, That's so sick. Brutal. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I wish it, I pretended more. It like, is a dental commercial. <laughs> <laughs> that was good money. My dad would watch Three's Company. He would watch running danger film movies and I would see how much attention the TV was getting and I remember as a kid being like you have to get it in the box yeah. like get on that Ooh. screen you will get his attention and I remember that's why I became beef jerky I, I, like, <laughs> <laughs> I remember I remember going up to my dad at like five say I don't know and being like hey what are you reading like he's like reading the paper and then I walked away and I remember being like that didn't go well like I remember being like that. I next time you got to be like, hey, like I remember yeah. thinking you've got to be more entertaining. What? I think get the his purest entertainers wow. like there's that type of entertainer where yeah. it's like seeking the approval and like just really. And then there's these pure entertainers that when you talk to them, they're like, oh, my parents, I used to make them crack up all the time. And you're just like, oh, like they were just like the little star of their family. I had to have like an, a, a, an achievement or yeah. a, a or be injured or hurt or yeah. sick. It was like it had to be it had, something had to be on fire or I had to be like. <laughs> <laughs> you know but there was no judgment around it as a kid you're not like oh my dad you're just oh this is what i have to do yeah. to get this love it doesn't yeah. you know and so um i would watch commercials and i would love watching commercials so i was like that's where all the like families are with food and like fridge and like i gotta get in there like i gotta get in that box and i remember you nailed it <laughs> huh? i mean look i remember and i would when i was alone like eating i would eat like like cold cuts oh, I'd, roll them, so I'd roll them up and like eat them as if i was on camera and pretend i was in commercials like it was a dissociative obviously like larping whatever you know what's so weird you just reminded me of like later on in life i would do which is funny because i know joe now but it was like I would like eat eggs like I was on Fear Factor. Like I always like <laughs> pretend like it was going to be really hard to eat. Like practicing. Yes. <laughs> like, it's only mental. You got that. I, I mean, for no there, reason. most of the people that I know that are and uh, that I've been able to ask about them, like people that are famous in the public eye. I'm like, did you know you were going to be famous? And they're like, yeah. Yeah. Like I was practicing that at a very young age. Not that I'm famous, but I remember like um, when I would see billboards, like we would like drive to Roanoke, Virginia, where I lived half the time. And it would say like McDonald's second exit. And everyone in the car would be like, should we go to McDonald's? And I'd be like, how did that kid get on the why, the kid eating the fries? Yeah, I could do that. Yeah, Same. So there was this one area in my city and this, that was the only area that had the big um, American billboards. And one was like a guest billboard. 
for guests. Uh, yeah. And every day that I would pass by it, I would imagine myself on there like over and over. That's and how over I again. felt when I saw the news story about Jean Benet Ramsey. I was like, <laughs> that could have been me in the pageant. <laughs> Is no one <laughs> weirded out by the fact, sorry, that there, uh, People Magazine had a, she turns 18 today. Ooh, they did another yeah. thing about oh, her mom bad. too. It's like they're like, did she kill her? Well, because there's like an eight chan or something like countdown of when Jean Benet would have been eighteen or something Creepy. like eighteen. Years. I just can't even believe she. It's just turning eighteen. Yeah, she, she would have like been eighteen. Thing I remember watching the documentary or one of them maybe, um, and it said, uh, you know, we know that she was molested because her vagina was three times the size of an average Again, that's her four friend. year old. That's her friend. <laughs> I'm like, how did you know the size of the average four year old? Yeah. 16 gauge. <laughs> how does anyone know? Yeah, exactly. How, did any, how does anyone know any of this? Yeah. yeah. Have you guys um, seen that? Uh, I think he, he's a father in his 40s who's putting his son's blood, he's getting transfused by his son's blood because he wants to achieve, he wants to Benjamin Button himself. He wants sure. to achieve reverse yeah. aging. Have you so seen So he's this? making his son give him his blood? Yeah, he's like transfusing his son's blood. How old's the son? Have you um, 18 or in his like. You Whitney, know, is 18. this your plan? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Buzzed She's <it>. harvesting. <laughs> Who, uh, I, I don't think this is a real thing. Uh huh. Son, father. <laughs> I mean, I don't think this is a. Uh, I don't think it bench. works. But... Yeah, I don't think this works. I think that's more of the. 17 year old. 17 year old son. He's a tech billionaire. Sure, sure. Man who spends $2 million a year to look 18. He doesn't look 18. He Let's doesn't. He's blurry. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's see him. And the son's fine with it? He looks like he's in his 40s. He doesn't look like he's reverse aging. He just looks like Why a guy who's gotten a lot of work done. Take a fucking nap, dude. Get a facelift. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this guy? Yeah. Young Bolt blood. Bolt figured it out. Yeah. Oh, he looks so he spends. He spends $2 million a year on his anti-aging routine. It's not just the transfusion, so he like worked yeah, out a certain way. I kind of like that men have eating disorders and body disorders. <laughs> yeah, anorexia. I cute. kind of like that guys hate themselves now and they're like doing Botox and doing all this beauty shit. And we're kind of like, ah, like, I don't know. I, I, I it's I, I, I we've always had to live like this and be worried about aging. So I don't know. I'm kind of fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like it's le like evening out the playing field a little bit. Well, Whitney, thank you so much for doing this. Oh my gosh, thanks for having, having me. this baby for us. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> it's like it's 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 and also I don't think your life's over when you have a kid. I think you like immediately start organizing your time better and being more efficient with your time. And yeah. I just I don't know. I was like running out of shit to talk about. Like, giving I am... hope. You know how Annie, you said that pregnancy is um, contagious. Yeah. Like I think I'm. <gasps> I've, I know it's honestly crazy. like yeah. I'm okay just getting inseminated by whoever and just being like all right fuck it who cares it's like I have so many girlfriends that did that they either did a surrogate or they just got a donor and they yeah. did it on their own or whatever I think I want to do it on my own this is fun it's super I'm inspired clarifying. it's not that I'm already halfway through I'm doing it so that I'll give birth in December so I'll like perfect gonna be gone anyway <laughs> you know what I mean like I just mean it's gonna be downtime you have it's to come up with your Santa thing quick yeah, and I just I've just been working way more efficiently, you know. It's not that hard and I I just I don't know. It feels like it's like inevitable for all of well, us. Well, you were like like six months ago, you were like, it seems archaic for me to have my own kid. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I, I didn't get it. I was like, but that is... seemed crazier. No, I was like, no, it's good. I can employ seems... a woman to have this. I'm redistributing the wealth. I should have someone yeah. else do it. Like, and I think I did. I think that we have to say a lot of things. Um, I had to say a lot of things that I believed at the time that I think were rooted in my insecurity of thinking, yeah. oh, well, I could never have my yeah. own anyway. Right, right. So I had to turn it into like, oh, it's archaic, yeah, right, guys. Right. We shouldn't be having kids because well, I didn't think I could. Well, my Todd's parents are really like putting on the pressure. Like, when are you going to defrost your... I'm, I'm like, I just froze them. So I keep <laughs> telling his mom... You could probably get pregnant naturally, though. Yeah. yeah, I think so, too. But I keep telling his mom, like, you're the surrogate. Do you want the kid? <laughs> you have it. I, I want one of your eggs. Dude, I'm just going to bang it out this year. I'm just going to roll the dice. You would love it. I think so. You would love it. I just it. want to like own a home first. I don't know. I just don't think I like have enough equity to have a kid right now. Is how if I you're a construction it. worker and you're thick butted. <laughs> your resume. Also, I think there's so many like, sorry, I will wrap up, but it's like, I've like people reach out. They're like, I have a bassinet. Do you want it? I have a this thing. Will you yeah. take it? Will you take this crib? Like, I haven't paid for a thing. I haven't yeah. bought anything so far. Like, will you take the stroller, please? Like, I don't need it anymore. It's like the village starts to appear and women start yeah. like, I mean, there's a lot of like crazy advice you start getting, but like people start being like, hey, do this, do this, go to this person, well, go to this. Louis told me of all people, Louis was like, 
He's like, you should definitely have a kid. He's like, he he's like, there's an old saying, every kid is born with a loaf of bread under their arm or something. Like mm. it always, you like, wealth comes with the kid somehow. Interesting. Ah. I remember uh, Donald Glover, like, uh, Childish Gambino, sorry. Remember when he was like rapping and doing really well and doing stand up and on community and on whatever and was like super, super successful, but was just, you know, doing that. And then all of a sudden he was on Fallon. Someone sent me a clip that didn't even know that I knew him of him singing Redbone shirtless. It sounded like Marvin Gaye meets Janis Joplin meets like, he like sound incredible. And I just texted him, I was like, uh, what happened? Like it was just like a completely different creative yeah. direction. And like I had chills when he was singing and he was like, I had a kid. Wow. Yeah. What? Yeah. And it like aimed his art. It just, I yeah, know. I think, I think per your thing, you start going like I have a higher purpose and the, wa like I need to change the world now because I'm bringing a kid into this world that might not have water and that might be unjust. And that might, you know, it's like, I'm like, what do I really want to say? Who do I really want to be? Like, what am I really going to put out there? Like, how am I really going to? Mm -hmm operate on a daily basis like I think it changes like focuses you up maybe a little bit or not I know a lot of male comics that uh, have kids that I didn't know they had kids for eight years that I've seen them perform <laughs> so, I hate a lot of you know I'm sure it doesn't do that for you everyone. also see the moms that are like the Kathy Ack moms that are like don't do it unless you're sure and then you're like oh yeah but those are the moms that's so so funny. Those are the moms that are like, what? my kid is impatient and controlling and has anger issues. I'm like, right. yeah, sounds like you. <laughs> All right, Wendy, well, thank you. And um, if everyone hasn't yet, they should definitely watch your special jokes on Netflix. It's so uh, funny. Um, and anything else we should be checking out? Your podcast, which loving the Only fans TV. Only fans TV. We did. I I took a break from the podcast, and I You're might. Back. I don't know. Yeah, for now, we'll see. Um, but uh, I just I'm out of things things to say uh and I kind of just need a break for myself and I had like a little bit of a business thing so I'm airing ad free episodes now for a little while having a lot of porn stars on they have a lot of wisdom so much wisdom oh, I endless love that. and endless. there's no weird shame when you're uh -huh. asking stuff you know it's like you're walking on eggshells yeah. they're just favorite like, people of podcasts yeah they're like put a beauty blender in your pussy to have sex on your period you're like damn <laughs> that was helpful <laughs> and then yeah the roast of me and the roast of Bert Kreischer uh, which Annie was on um, OFTV it's totally free uh, we'll be doing more roasts on there um, and I don't know what else You, I mean just like baby on board dude, baby coming soon what a trip you have to do a pregnancy special I'm doing I'm shooting one in September yeah you have to yes it seems I'm excited to see how hot you who get who was I talking pregnant? to who was like comedians are the only people that are like I want to work when I'm pregnant like I want to show everybody like it's just it is weird to because it's the one job it's like a good job to have while pregnant yeah because yeah. you have stuff to say about it yeah I think it's good to show people like your life's not over when you're pregnant and also like the guys that. are just their wives are home pregnant they're just out on I know, tour like why can't you just stay home and lie in bed why do you have to, yeah. like go do stand up I don't know so yeah I'm just gonna knock one out and uh <laughs> in September because it's just like there's stuff that I need to if I don't say it now there's no point in saying it next yeah. year you know and who knows I might die in childbirth you won't oh my god maybe you sound like me <laughs> <That's crazy. laughs> maybe you guys thank you so much for watching and we will see you next week with a brand new episode we love our Whitney love you Whitney. We love you guys <laughs> Bye.